Hey everybody, welcome to Big Boys Toys. I'm James, we're out in the garage today. As you can see, it's a little chilly. It's the second week of January of 2022. So far we haven't uh, had a deep freeze like we had last February. Fingers crossed that we don't have that again. We're gonna do something a little different today, start a new series. And this series is called Gone But Not Forgotten. And what I'm gonna do is uh, go over the 928s perhaps some of the other cars as well, but certainly the 928s primarily that I have owned in the past and have since sold on. And since I've owned like 15 928s and, and down to five, we got a lot of ground to cover. We're gonna start with Blue 82. Let's do this. <laughs> So Blue 82 um, is a really interesting car. It is probably one of the nicest 928s in existence today. At least it was when it left my garage about seven years ago. I bought it in 2008. A friend of mine brokered the deal, Kai, up in Seattle. He was looking for uh, a motorcycle. He has a, a business selling motorcycles, used motorcycles mostly. And he saw an advertisement in his local paper about three motorcycles that were for sale. A friend of his went and looked at them and uh, decided to pass on them and told Kai he was going to pass on them and that the man that was selling the motorcycles also happened to have a 928 in the garage. So Kai being a 928 guy and, and sly, he drove his 928 to the man's house to look at the motorcycles. The man meets him outside and goes, oh, I've got a 928. And Kai said, oh, that's very interesting. Let's go look at the motorcycles. He bought all three of the guy's motorcycles and then said, 928 for sale? And the guy said, yes, it is actually. I, I might sell it. And Kai said, well, here's a check. If you uh, wanna sell it, cash the check and, and I'll take it. And before Kai even bought the car, uh, he had posted a picture of it online and I saw the picture and I got a hold of Kai and I said, hey, I, I want that car. And so Kai brokered the sale basically between me and the first owner. So I was the second owner. It spent a brief period of time at uh, Kai's 928 shop getting a new timing belt and water pump and um, a few other belts and hoses and what have you so it'd be ready to go had 3,500 uh, 500 miles on it and then kai drove it a couple of times for pictures but he couldn't drive it fast because it still had its original tires on it they were flat spotted and dry rotted they looked brand new but they uh you couldn't go more than about 25 miles an hour on them because it would shake your shake the the fillings right out of your teeth so anyway, um, he had some pictures taken and there was an article written. And uh, as we go, you'll see pictures of the things I'm talking about. There was an article written in Excellence Magazine about the car. The article is called Straight and Arrow because the car is arrow blue, one of my absolute favorite colors that Porsche ever produced, which is why I wanted the car. I wanted the car because of the color and that it was a 928. And, and little did I know, just how awesome the car was till it arrived in August of 2008, I believe it was. The car is perfect. I mean, smelled new, looked new, drove like new. Once I got new tires and new wheels on it, uh, I bought another set of wheels that matched the original wheels on the car and I put fresh rubber on them basically so that it could be driven at least a little bit. So uh, I got the car in 2008. It had all the paperwork with it. It's an interesting story about the car. Kai got the story from the original owner. He was a dentist and he had a five-speed car that his wife couldn't drive. She couldn't drive manual transmission. So he took the five-speed car back. This car was sitting on the showroom floor. So this was a, a dealer ordered car. It wasn't ordered for anyone in particular. And when they got the car in, they sent it to the best high-end stereo place in Seattle. And those folks took out 
the original stereo and speakers and put in a Concord head unit and ADS amps and speakers, if I'm not mistaken. I, I'll have to look at the, the pictures and see if the, it says in on the uh, any of the brochures that I have pictures of. But it was the best stereo money could buy at the time. And it's very interesting because you see the the window sticker and you know there had to have been an ancillary window sticker because there's no place where it lists the car stereo mods that the dealer did. So I don't know what the actual cost of the car was with the stereo. I know what the window sticker says, 42 if memory serves, 42,000 somewhere around there. That stereo, you have all the receipts, though the, the, the dealership kept all the receipts and you would think, well, maybe they would black out how much the stereo cost because now they're gonna give you the receipts when you buy the car so that if something happens to the stereo, you can take it back to the stereo company and they'll replace it or what have you. Well, they didn't do that. They didn't black out the costs uh, the line item costs for any of the stereo stuff. Instead, they took a pair of scissors and cut them out. So there is absolutely no way to tell exactly what the dealer paid for the stereo installation on that car. I'm sure, I'm sure it was in the thousands of dollars. It was very professionally done. They built a little wooden covers for the new amplifiers that they put behind the front seats and the floorboard for the back seats. So they don't take up any of the uh, uh, room in the back and there's no unsightly boxes built back there. It's It looks totally stock. The speakers behind the front seats are, are rectangles though. So it's kind of interesting. You can definitely see the difference uh, in the speaker. So you know something's gone on. And then you look at the head unit and it's a Concord head unit, which of course Porsche never did a Concord head unit. That was all blah punk, blah punk stuff. Uh, think in all the Porsches or Alpine maybe did a few as well. Uh, anyway, the car was just fantastic. So it shows up at my house uh, on a enclosed trailer. It just looks so good. I, first thing I did was wash the car, uh, drove it around the block. That's about it. And um, a couple of months later, I took it to its first car show. It, it was called Porsche Delo. It's a concourse event uh, that the local PCA ran here at the time and uh, it won its class, of course. It should have won overall, but I did, I missed a couple of little things, just little things. And of course, when it comes to a concourse event, it's the little things that, you know, separate the winner from, from second and third place, right? So it got second overall, uh, my fault on that. And then uh, a little later, a friend came over a couple months later, I guess, and we pulled the wheels off Jack the car up and cleaned the Cosmoline off of uh, the parts of it that were protected with that, just again, to make it even cleaner and, and, and shine even more. So it was as clean underneath as it was inside and out. Uh, an amazing ride and it drove like a brand new car. That's the thing that really, uh, I, I was just so shocking to me was to get in this car and see what it felt like to drive a brand new 928. It was just fantastic. And it's one of those things that most of us into 928s now will never have had the opportunity to experience in the past and will never experience uh, again since, of course, the cars are so old now and there aren't hardly any left with that few miles on them. If you went to a dealership in the 80s or 90s and you were looking at a 911 and you happen to have a 928 in the showroom that the dealer was willing to let you drive and you drove it and then you drove the 911 from that same model year, there is no chance that you would prefer the 911 to the 928. The 928 was 50% more expensive than the 911 in any given model year and worth it. That said, a lot of people couldn't afford it. I mean, 911 was probably a stretch for a lot of people buying a 911, so they couldn't afford a car that was 50% more expensive. But by God, if they drove a 928, they sure wish they could. It was fantastic. Not very fast, mind you. It had the 220 horsepower, 219 horsepower, four and a half liter engine. So 
uh, didn't didn't go like the wind, but it was faster than a 911, which had 185 horsepower, 190, something like that. So the car felt and drove like new, looked like new. It was a joy to own. It was a joy to look at in the garage. It was so special to me, and the color was so, just so perfect. My favorite color. I, I didn't want to sell the car, but I needed to sell the car. I had put, uh, when I bought it, it had 3,535 miles on it. I'll show you a picture of the odometer. And when I sold it, it had 3,775 miles on it, if I'm not mistaken. Sold it to a collector down in um, New Orleans. He had it for several years. He sold it to a collector in Houston. I never met that collector. I don't know who the guy in Houston was. I think that that person sold it after a couple of years and the person who bought it from him is the one who put it on bring a trailer last week I guess it was was the when it finished out and it had sold on uh, bring a trailer for ninety five thousand dollars with four thousand and I think four miles on it a friend of mine saw it in Chicago and took a picture of it for me and I, I think I saw four thousand four miles on the odometer now uh, amazing car a joy to own a joy to drive which i wish i had done more of but the whole value of that car was in its low miles so i didn't want to drive it but then i did want to drive it i sat in it i started it i smelled the leather i listened to the stereo many times sitting in the garage without driving the car but anyway that's my story about blue 82. if you see blue 82 around give it a pat on the rump and tell them james said hi Hey, thanks for joining me. Remember, like, subscribe, and comment below so we can keep doing these things. And uh, thanks for being here. See One thing I forgot to mention about Blue 82 when I was talking about all the paperwork that came with the car uh, is that the original owner had it as his company car for his dentistry practice. So every time he drove the car, he would write down the date, where he went, and the number of miles. So I Kai did that when he drove it for photos, and then I continued doing that over the six years or eight years, whatever it was that I owned the car. I'm not sure that that continued. I, I suspect it would have, because nobody hardly ever drove the car, so how hard would it be to pencil in the, the new uh, date, destination, and miles? kind of one of those cool things that you could literally track this car through time and space so to speak so on any given day you could tell where the car had been mostly it was in the original owner's garage or my garage but you could see the few days that it was driven how far and where it went it's very cool very cool that you don't I, I never owned a car that was that had that level of detail within the records. So anyway, I didn't see a picture of the little five ring uh, notebook uh, in my pictures. If I find one, I'll, I'll put it here too. Fantastic vehicle. Also here at the very end of the video, uh, in case there are any sensitive people to pictures of girls in bikinis, I use this car extensively for my calendar photo shoots for obvious reasons and not hardly a prettier car out there, 928 wise anyway. So uh, I took a lot of pictures of this car with pretty girls. So here's a montage of uh, model and 920 uh blue 82 shots uh this these were all photos taken for high heels and hot wheels 
the calendars that I used to do for, I don't know, four or five years. Enjoy.